Hi everyone, this is Roman Jacquez from TheAirCoders.com and in this tutorial I will show you how to create a WCF RESTful service exposing JSON. REST, or short for Representational State Transfer, has gained widespread acceptance across the web as a simpler alternative to SOAP and Web Service Description Language based web services. Some of the most important characteristics of RESTful services are the use of HTTP methods explicitly, you know, that's one of the key characteristics of a RESTful web service, is, you know, the explicit use of HTTP methods using GET, POST, PUT, etc. Um, be stateless. Stateless, that means, you know, no state being held locally in between requests. Uh, as a REST web service application or client includes within the HTTP headers and body of a request all of the parameters, all the context, and data needed by the service side component to generate a response so that you can receive it, uh, you know, by after making a, uh, a request and then receiving a response. Um, expose directory structure like URIs, we'll talk about that a little bit later as well, in which we make the, West rep, uh, the, the REST web service intuitive enough to the point that each URI request is easy to guess and construct and transfer XML, JSON, or both, which are the two serialization formats that we use uh, for RESTful services. Okay, so uh, diving right into the code, we're going to create a project in Visual Studio. We're going to go File, New Project. We're, uh, under WCF, we're going to select the WCF service application, and we're going to create a WCF RESTful service uh, called the Person JSON Service. So we're going to create... We're going to create a... a we're going to create a RESTful service that will expose people information as JSON. So we're going to create it. We're going to create it like this, uh, and I'm going to go through every step. So we just click OK, and right now we just get you know the, the full information that we get out of a uh, out of a WCF service. After this project, then will be will be converted as a RESTful service. Um, we get like uh, you know some default files. I'm just going to delete those so I can start from scratch. So I'm just going to get rid of these files over here and I'm going to create my own um, SVC file so add new item and then I'm going to select WCF service I'm going to call this person JSON service okay so now what we need to define is uh, this is one of the most important things that we're going to define now for example let's say we're going to we're going to define the operations that will be exposed through this service but it's just not like a regular soap service in which you define your operations uh by by naming them uh operation contracts and putting uh, some other uh attributes but in this case for a restful service we need to specify certain attributes but first let's create the plumbing of this whole application First, we need to create um, our data contracts or the information that will be passed back and forth. So I'm just I'm not gonna create another file. I'll just I'll just probably create it right under here. So I'm gonna create a public class. I'm gonna call it person. This class will just hold the properties and it, it just be like a, a j just the object that we will serialize into JSON and we will collect information from the user and expose it as JSON as well. So I'm gonna create a few properties here. So I'm just gonna put like. Um, maybe uh, this, uh, the first name I'm gonna create also like a last name and uh, and age so I could try that and last name and age so okay so now for a data contract uh, to be valid and and for, for this object to be serialized I need to put of course the corresponding attributes which are um, data contract for each one of these and data members for each one of the members within my data contract. So I'm just going to create these. And then after I create my data uh, my data members, I need to specify um, also uh, the name of, let's say, this, uh, this property and how it will be exposed in the JSON. Uh, real quick, you can just add an, uh, another attribute to this uh, within this attribute, like a sub attribute called name. So I'm just going to put the same name of the property that has been defined. So I'm just going to say that the name is first name. In this case, the name will be last name. And for this one, the name will be age. Um, you can even specify one for the data contract. We can do that. So I'm just going to call it this person. Okay, so then we're all set. Now, 
I have my data contract already in place. This is what, what will be serialized as JSON. But where do we specify uh, that this will be exposed as JSON or, or serialized as JSON? Well, you define the operation contract to expose a collection, in this case an array, of person objects. How do I do that? So I say person, I make it into an array, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say get person, get people, let's call it. Okay, so then this operation will expose a collection of per, of, of person objects that I will um, uh, I will create statically at least for this example. Maybe you can just retrieve this information from a database, from an entity, from the entity framework, or some other means. But in this case, I'm just going to hard code this information for you so that at least we can uh, do this example. But the key part over here in the WCF, the most important elements of a REST application include the web get and web invoke attributes and the new binding web HTTP binding in connection with the web HTTP endpoint behavior. Uh, when we uh, set up the uh, some some values on the web back config, we're going to show you that. But at least uh, I'm going to show you then the the key part that you need to do on this operation. So when it, what you need to define is a web invoke and then you have to bring in the system that service model that web in order to define this so the web invoke has um, uh, several parameters that you need to pass into this attribute the most important one is the method which is again the method that you're going to utilize in order to make the request and responses so in this case is or in this case is get the second parameter would be then the body style or the or, or actually wh how you're going to define how the information will be uh, uh, sh uh, like either wrapped or just shown as a bear as uh, you know uh, in in its bare format so if you just say body style and then you say web message body style dot bear you have some other uh, options you have wrapped wrap request or response but you would want to go with bear so that you could just get the bear information the bear JSON if you uh, ex uh, if you tried this like on Internet Explorer let's say you would just get a file like a JSON file a bear JSON file if you try to like in other browsers like Firefox or Chrome you would actually uh, or, or using like a plugin you can actually view it in the browser so you could just you want to get the bear information then the next important one is the response format so what is the response format? In a RESTful service, you can either define uh, JavaScript object notation, JSON, or XML. In our case, the web message format is going to be JSON. So you're gonna, you can define it right here. And the URI, the URI template, which is how you will make the request and how it will be uh, uh, requested through the URI whenever you make the, the request, is going to be get people for example you can call this anything you want you just need to remember that whatever you define here is what you're going to is what you're going to use in order to make the call uh to get the information from the from the restful service because remember we're making a get request so we're passing it through the um th through the http request through the ur through the uri so you can just close right here and just define this. So this is the operation contract, of course, uh, of your service contract, and the web invoke uh, and the web invoke attribute. And let me just split it right here so that we can see it. So we have the method get body style. We're gonna make a bear response format is JSON and URI template get people. So now why don't we implement this in our uh, SVC file? So we just open this right away. We can just delete this. Uh, uh, this uh, generated for us and we're just going to implement the interface right away by implementing the interface it just provides us with the method that will that will be exposed through the uh, will be exposed through the restful service and will show us our information here I'm just going to hard code something real quick it's just for you to see that how we can uh, uh, expose information I'm just going to create real quick like a list of person objects and I'm going to call it people new list of person and right away I'm just gonna define a few like hard-coded objects of person so new person first name Roman last name Jaquess H31 I'm just gonna find a few more here James Lorenzo H 35 another another uh, pe per another person right here Vladimir Heredia 
32. By the way, James Lorenzo and Vladimir Heredia are my uh, co-workers, my colleagues here in the Air Coders. Uh, okay, so after I have defined my people, I'm just going to say here, return people to array. By doing this, I'm actually returning all the person objects from within the list. Uh, again, this list has just been constru constructed here for uh, uh, for you know tutorial purposes. But let's say in your case, you might be uh, retrieving this information from a database, um, and then just uh, uh, retrieving it, converting it to uh, to the, uh, like in this case, uh, populating these. Uh, these objects, these data contracts, and then converting those to an array so that they could be exposed.